Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing an updated nursery tour. We recently moved to be closer to work and have more time to spend at home as a family instead of being stuck in an hour long commute every day. So of course, with every move, that means new floor plans and a lot of rearranging to accommodate the new space that we're working with. So I just wanted to show you what the girls' room looks like now and all the minor tweaks that we've done and the newest additions that we've brought into the room that I'm really, really excited to show you guys. We'll start off with the wall immediately to the right when you walk in. If you guys saw my previous video regarding Layla's nursery, I created the set of nine animal prints. I hand drew all these animals with just a black Sharpie. And then I ordered some faux vines to just hot glue to the edges because I loved the texture that it gave to the room and I really wanted something that would make a statement. If you follow me on Instagram, when we moved in, I was debating whether or not to edit this set of nine down to a set of six just because we had less space to play with. In their last room, I pretty much had a whole blank wall to spread out the nine animals. And I think the majority of people actually voted that I do edit it down to six, but I had to stay true to myself and stay true to my original vision. And when I made these, I intentionally wanted a full set of nine. I wanted a whole statement wall. And so I decided I was going to keep it that way. And I'm so, so glad it did. I think it works so beautifully in the space. It still makes such a huge impact. I love that it takes up all of the space above the shelf versus how much space only six of the prints would have left. Now let's talk about this bookshelf. I am honestly not a fan of cube bookshelves. This is why it was in the closet in our last place. I think they're very Ikea. <laughs> if you know what I mean, they're just very like mainstream. I feel like they lack personality, but we needed the storage space and we already had it. So why spend the money on getting something new? We did not originally have these baskets. We had a whole bunch of like mismatched baskets and then a few cubbies didn't have baskets at all. And it just was not a good look. So I had to find some baskets to put in this, but everywhere I looked, Every single basket was 13 by 13. These were like 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So obviously this 13 by 13 would not fit. And I finally found on Amazon after like scrolling a few pages in like a 11 and a half by 11 and a half. I was originally looking for white, but this being my only choice is either between beige or pink. And pink is obviously the chosen accent color of this room. But there was so much surface space that this color was going to take up. So I went with the beige and I'm so happy it did. I love the neutral color of it. I think it works so well with this whole nature vibe. I love that it has the white trim at the top. There are actually handles and the handles are white, but I could not stand the look of it with all of the handles facing out. It just like popped out and I didn't want to have to notice it every time I walked in. So luckily, even though I originally wanted these baskets to fit completely seamless in these squares, I am so thankful that there's actually this little gap on top of the baskets because it's just enough room for you to be able to put your fingers in and just pull the basket out. So that way I was able to turn all of the baskets, hide those stinking handles, and then keep it nice and clean in the front. Granted, we do have that seam down the front, but I would have much prefer that versus those handles. And then of course, when we had to utilize the top of the shelf space, it just wouldn't have made sense if we did not use that space. The trick to keeping a kid's room still looking very neat and polished is by being very selective of what toys you do have on display. I selected key pieces that worked well with the theme and that were cute and kind of a bigger size instead of having like a lot of little things. So we have this just little wooden platform, their cute little safari truck that they got from their cousins, some select books. Again with this, 
I definitely suggest just picking out some books that work well with the color scheme of the room. So there's a lot of like white going on, a little bit of green, a little bit of pink, and the books just look like they fit perfectly with the decor. And then of course we have our little elephant that we bought before Layla was born, and all of you new parents should definitely get you a sound machine. It is an absolute must have. Moving on to this corner, we have our swivel slash rocking chair. You guys have seen this in my last nursery tour, but I don't believe you saw the ottoman that I bought to go with it. I bought this at Ross. I absolutely love the shape and the detail of it. It's tufted at the top. It has these really great vintage brass studs along all of the edges and i love that it brings that metal into the room it was only like 40 bucks you guys ross always has the cutest stools in stock so if you're looking for a stool go there behind our rocking chair we have that corner shelf we have the faux florals and the faux vinery dripping down again for that added texture and dimension in the room and then on display, we also have just a few leftover favors from Layla's baptism. By the way, that video for that tutorial on those favors is my second most viewed video of all time on my channel. Apparently, you guys loved it just as much as I did. So thank you guys so much for your love on that video. Appreciate it. Anyways, this corner was honestly just looking very, very plain. But cue the curtains i'm obsessed with these curtains not only does it like frame this corner and give it that extra touch that this corner needed it's the perfect color last time we had these sheer bright pink curtains this time around i wanted to tone it down and go a little bit more of the sophisticated roots this color is a dusty blush and it is so beautiful in person these aren't blackout curtains but it does filter out a lot of light, which is really nice when you have kids and it's time for them to take their nap or sleep at night or whatever, and there's a lot of ambient light outside. I originally bought 84 inch panels because I really like the curtains with the back tabs on them versus the grommets that you can see here. I love the way that the back tabs kind of gives the top of the curtains like a ruffle look and it was only available in the 84 inch panel, nothing longer. But when I went to hang them up, they were literally like an inch shy of hitting the floor. And you can't not commit to going floor length. If you're gonna get curtains, go floor length. It makes the world of difference. It makes your room look so much bigger, so much taller, and it's just so much more polished. So I had to return them and go for the next length up. Unfortunately, that only came in the grommets. I don't mind them as much as I thought I would, but the only problem is I actually bought the curtain rods before the curtains came in, and those curtain rods would have been perfect for a back tab curtain, but with grommets, you actually want to get rods that stick out further from the wall so that they can move more freely. And moving down here, we still have my gorgeous gold basket. And it's just the perfect place to store our ridiculous amounts of blankets. With these two babies, we've been gifted so many blankets and swaddles. We have rolled ones on top and then a whole fold <coughs> stack of them underneath to give it that height. She'll definitely want to invest in some aesthetically pleasing baskets when it comes to storage for all of your kids stuff whether it be stuffed animals or things like that right before evelyn was born we wanted to do something just really exciting for layla before all the attention kind of shifted over to her new baby sister she absolutely loves cooking she loves feeding all of her friends so we knew that we had to get her a kitchen this is the retro kitchen from Kidcraft in pink. I really originally wanted white because I wanted it to be able to blend into the room and not really stand out, but the white was out of stock. When it comes to buying bigger toys, I definitely suggest just looking for an option within the color palette of your home. This just goes hand in hand with being very selective about what you're putting on shelves. Obviously, 
almost everything that has to do with kids is ridiculously colorful but when you start like accumulating that in your home it just looks very chaotic i mean if you're into the whole rainbow thing there's definitely a way that you can do it that it is really very cute but again I wanted to keep the room looking very just clean and more sophisticated. So, wanted the white, went with the pink as a backup option. It's still super cute. It has all of the white handles and knobs, so it works within the color palette. And of course, she absolutely loves it, which is really what matters most. Over to the other corner, we have Jaffa the giraffe that I've had for more than a decade. That was kind of the only corner that I could stuff him in. So he's kind of just hanging out there. Next to him, we have this super cute little play tent that my sister bought Layla for her first Christmas. It ombres into a pink, but it's very, very subtle. It also has this little white pom-pom detail on the hem of it. Inside, we just have a couple pillows, that black and white one I made, and then that pink one was also part of the Christmas gift. And then we have her giraffe and the elephant. Nice little friends to have in her tent. Moving on to the crib, I know you guys are thinking there's nothing above the crib, Crystal. What's going on? You can't possibly have a blank wall above the crib. I know. Ever since we've moved in, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what am I going to do with this wall. If you guys remember from our last nursery tour, my sister gifted us with this gorgeous wooden sign with Layla's name written in my sister's penmanship and it's it's so so pretty but obviously this is a room for both of my girls now this is technically evelyn's bedroom but layla's playroom so they are sharing the room but evelyn's the one that sleeps here layla is still in bed with us so i couldn't just hang layla's name above the crib but don't you worry i have a really really cute idea for a DIY project on top of the crib. I think you guys are gonna love it, but I'm saving it for another video. I still have to gather all of the materials for it. So stay tuned for that. You guys know I love this crib and I painted all of the little screws and bolts goals just to have another place to bring that metal back into the room. I did not buy a crib skirt. I love the negative space underneath the crib and beforehand i had just these really cute decorative baskets for storage underneath but since the closet is literally stuffed from bottom to top with clothes and diapers it basically like spilled over into the rest of the room so i had to use the bottom of the crib to store even more clothes and even more diapers but as soon as we use up all those diapers and as soon as we're able to move some of those clothes into the garage, we can bring that space back to either just being empty or moving it back to decorative baskets with things that we'll actually be using constantly over the next few years. Now, let's move to my absolute favorite part of this room. I am so obsessed with this little vignette that we've got going on this vanity. You guys know I love my little dresser. I love the curves and the details of it. It's so, so pretty. You guys have seen most of the stuff that's on top of it to add a little bit of decor. My faux greenery with a little bit of a DIY rope situation happening around it. Some more gold accents with my little clock and the little elephant. And I picked up this jewelry holder from, I believe it was from Home Goods. My daughter loves dressing up. She's so cute. She is absolutely my mini me. She loves playing with her necklaces and putting all of her bracelets on. Now, can we talk about this mirror? It is so good. And the best part about this mirror, I only got it for $20 on Facebook Marketplace. That is by far my favorite find on Facebook Marketplace. And it's pretty funny because I found it and I was immediately obsessed with it. I had to have it. I messaged the guy right away asking him if it was still available. He said that it was. I told him, okay, I'll come pick it up whenever you're available. And he stopped responding to me. And he didn't respond to me for that whole weekend. I was like, dude, come on, what happened? Every single day I kept thinking about that mirror and then I ended up messaging him a couple times. I was basically stalking the guy until he gave it up. 
finally messaged me back. He told me it was still available. I went out and got it right away and I was just so happy to be able to bring it home. I tried it out in a few different places in the house, but when I put it on top of this dresser, the stars aligned and it just felt so perfect and so right and it looks so good. And of course, my black spots on the wall, I had to bring that back. You guys saw me do that in the last DIY. I hand cut all of these little spots from blackboard wall stickers. Super easy, super renter friendly, and way more cost effective than if I were to buy wallpaper. I just love how fun it looks and how much it enhances that kind of like wild nature safari vibe that I was going for. Now let's just take a really, really quick peek into the bathroom. Of course, I wanted to be able to continue with the theme into the bathroom. So I just have a few minor touches in there. We have that palm print up on that left side of the wall. And then we also have this beer can that I could not get rid of. It was so stinking cute and it so works well with this whole nature vibe. I just cut off the top of it and then stuck some faux greenery in it and I think it looks so good and it was free. So we have that and then just a few little bathroom necessities. Then we have Smelly the Elephant that was above my rocking chair in our last place, but we didn't really have a place to put him in the room this time around, so now he's above the toilet. And his name is Smelly, so it kind of like just like fits perfectly right. And then we have a couple little decorative baskets here to hold the baby Q-tips and their combs and their nail clipper. I do really want to get a shelf to put here on this wall so I can raise those baskets off of the toilet. I just think it'll look more <laughs> sophisticated than having it just be directly on the toilet. So that's one addition that I still want to make. And then to finish it off, we have our little leaf print shower curtain. So another style tip, if you guys don't have a shower liner, get yourself a shower liner. It allows you to bring your shower curtain to the front of the tub so you can appreciate whatever design you've got going on on your shower curtain. And you guys, this can be a really cheap fix. I get my shower liners from the Dollar Tree and it just comes so in handy when it comes to styling your bathroom all cute. So that is it for their new nursery. I hope you guys liked all of the little tweaks that we made. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification button so you can check out that cute little DIY I'm brewing up in my head for above the crib. I think you guys are really gonna love it. Until then, again, thank you, love you guys. Evelyn loves you guys, and I will see you in the next video.